you to Policy Genius for sponsoring today's video. Summer's coming to an end and the leaves are about to fall. While Mother Nature does her thing to prepare for the new season, you can do yours by getting free life insurance quotes with Policy Genius. If someone relies on your financial support, whether it's a child, aging parent, or even a business partner, you need life insurance. We find great comfort in knowing that our loved ones are covered in the event of something happened. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare quotes from over a dozen top insurers all in one place. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius, and you could save $1,300 or more per year on life insurance by using Policy Genius to compare policies. Getting started is easy. First, head to policygenius.com slash redpoppyranch. In minutes, you can work out how much life insurance you need and compare personalized quotes to find your best price. The licensed experts work for you so you can trust them to help you navigate every step of the shopping and buying process. Head to policygenius.com slash redpuppyranch to get started right now. scrap chunks of wood that you spend all afternoon picking up whenever I do my projects. Firewood is firewood. Okay, I am headed up to the tiny cabin up there to see if I can't get the new wood stove installed, uh, see if I can't get the place cleaned up a little bit, and basically get it ready to use. Um, I literally have not done anything with that place since I finished it, so I need to get it finished, I need to get it um, uh, cleaned up a little bit, uh, but the main focus will be that wood stove and getting some firewood piled up. Ruby, let's go, come on, come on. <laughs> the smoke detector's working.
After picking up this small Scandia wood-burning stove a few weeks back, I've been trying to find the time to come and get it installed. Not only is it cooling off enough to have a fire, but I'm very curious to see what it's going to look like once I get it installed in the little tiny cabin. By getting this checked off the list, I can start building a small desk some bookshelves, and anything else that I can think of that will be needed up here in the cabin. But without that little wood stove, there's no way that we can come and stay in it over winter. Naturally, one of my biggest concerns is making sure this is done in a way where it will be safe and there's no chance of anything catching on fire. Above and beyond the smoke detector and the fire extinguisher and the carbon monoxide detector that I already have up here in the cabin, by using this insulated ring, there will be no concern with anything catching on fire as the chimney makes it through the exterior wall to the outside. I'm trying to keep as much of the chimney pipe inside the cabin as I possibly can because naturally a lot of heat comes off that chimney. But I also do not want to have the chimney penetrate through the roof. So by going through the side of the cabin, the only real concern I have is making sure the chimney pipe is secured well enough where it will not get damaged with the snow and the wind.
This is six inch single wall chimney pipe. I could have used triple wall chimney pipe, but that was a little bit overkill. But using this insulated termination ring and making sure the wood is far enough away from the single wall chimney pipe, it won't be vulnerable for catching fire. Once I get the small wood stove installed, I will then build some sort of a stone hearth on the floor and the wall behind the stove, creating that second barrier between the stove and the wall. Even with as small as this little Scandia stove is, I'm fairly confident that it will provide more than enough heat for the little 150 square foot cabin. But I can't wait to come up here and stay on those days when it gets down well below zero. The man that I bought this Scandia wood stove from had sandblasted it and repainted it. And I know that the first few times that I use the wood stove, there's going to be some paint burning off. Although it's a fairly warm day today, I wanted to get the stove hot and get rid of as much of the paint smells as I possibly can. I temporarily cut a piece of pipe in half and used that on top of the chimney pipe to prevent any snow or rain from getting down in the chimney until I can get back up here with a ladder and the proper bracket to secure the chimney to the eaves of the cabin, making sure that with any weather that we may get up here, that the chimney will stay right where it's supposed to.
Well, that was kind of the, the last piece of the puzzle up here. There's still lots of work I need to do around here. But first thing Monday, I'm gonna get a bracket that supports that uh, chimney. Uh, sitting on that 90 like that with a little bit of wind, it's gonna ruin that 90. So I need to secure that. And I may even extend it up a little bit higher. It really should be 10 or 12 inches above the pitch of the roof. I'm also gonna pick up that last piece of tin that I keep forgetting to bring up here and get that installed. And then it's a process of just kind of cleaning things up and making this a, a fun little usable place to be. Um, getting the, the wood stove in uh, just kind of makes me want to get up here and do something with it, bring, bring uh, my boys and bring them up here. Um, I, I would like to find a big piece of flagstone to put underneath the stove. And I may at some point build a, uh, uh, some sort of a hearth out of stone as well behind the uh, chimney, just to be safe. Um, the last thing we need is, is to catch this little place on fire. If this ever caught on fire, uh, there's the, the, the biggest concern is how much of my land would it burn with it? Because there's, there's really no way any vehicles are gonna get up here uh, to be able to put it out. So I don't want that to happen. That's why I have fire extinguishers. That's why we have the smoke detector. But uh, this is fun. I need to get me a little desk made. I need to get me a little chair and get the bed set up up here. Cedar and I decided to spend some money on some gravel this year. And we put about nine loads of gravel in the worst spots on the road. This gravel is what they call pit run, which means it's quite a bit less expensive than screen gravel, but it packs down much better for a road base. I like this gravel so much, we may end up pushing all of the gravel that we have in our driveway into a pile and reusing that gravel down on the road somewhere and putting this pit run all around our house. But that's not gonna happen this year. Good. 
I gotta get the new snow plow off the truck. I picked this snow plow up um, about a week ago. This is the heavy duty snow plow that I've been looking for. It's a blizzard eight foot plow. It actually has the wings on the side so it should send uh, the snow a little further. The problem with this plow is it's probably twice as heavy as the old Myers plow that I have on the F-250. So I'm gonna have to find something that can handle it. This is the heavy duty snow plow that I've been hoping I would find. It's obviously used, but it's not too beat up. There's a couple of things that need to be fixed on it before I mount it to a new truck, but the price point was perfect and the quality is there. I now need to find at least a one ton truck that can push this plow without any problems. The plow is eight feet wide and literally weighs almost twice what the Myers plow does that is currently on the F-250 that I've used to plow the road for the last couple of years. I can tell you for certainty it's not going on the new 1991 Dodge Dually I recently picked up. That truck is too clean and in too good of condition to be a plow truck. Every once in a while, I see some great deals on some medium duty plow trucks, but the concern I have with those big plow trucks would be the fear of tipping it over in one of the corners on our road. I have found that I need to drive pretty fast when I'm plowing, and I would not feel comfortable doing that in a vehicle that would weigh well over 10,000 pounds. Normally you would pick all of the apples off on the first year uh, with these fruit trees, but I left one on. I was worried the cows were gonna get it. Um, we've had a couple of nights of below freezing, and so this thing should be almost edible. It's a Liberty apple. It's wonderful. I can't wait to have all these trees have apples on it, probably could have handled a couple more hard freezes and it would have sweetened it up a little bit, but it's still, still really good. Very, very crispy. This coming Wednesday's video, we're gonna get back on the second solar array and see if we can't get it done much faster than the first array went.